Hello and welcome back to the, the BLC box. Uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, the recent protests that have been going on in Bulgaria. And uh, I'm joined today in the BLC box by uh, Hristo Ivanov. Uh, Hristo is a Bulgarian politician. He's the leader of the Yes Bulgaria political party. Uh, he's also a lawyer and a graduate of the St. Clement Dohritsky University of Sofia uh, and has been a former Deputy Prime Minister uh, of Bulgaria and Minister of Justice in Bulgaria. Uh, for a very, very long time, he's been involved in initiatives dealing with legislative and judicial reform, preventing corruption and promoting the, the rule of law. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody is, is watching this interview from outside Bulgaria, you might recognize him as one of the individuals who was stopped by Bulgarian Secret Service agents uh, from landing their boat and planting the Bulgarian flag on a public beach at the beginning of July, uh, which set off a wave of public protests uh, against the government and calling for widespread constitutional reform, including reform of the Bulgarian judiciary and the office of the prosecutor general. Uh, Christo, many, many thanks for joining us today. My pleasure and thanks for, for being interested in, in what happens, happens in, in my country. No, absolutely. Um, and I was hoping that what we would do today in terms of structure is uh, in the first segment at the beginning, uh, you would give us a brief overview of, of uh, how you understand the, the problems, uh, the, the causes of the current protests that have been going on since the beginning of July. Uh, and then in the second part, we could talk about uh, what you see as the solutions, uh, what, what role for both Bulgarian institutions, for the European institutions and the member states. Um, sure, so maybe we can start with, with what do you think is the, the issue? Why, why are people protesting in, in Bulgaria? Well, I, I, I guess uh, you can uh, analyze this at, at three levels. Uh, one level is the sort of the immediate chain of events that uh, triggered the, the, this wave of, of, of protests that we've been seeing for now um, close to two months. And that are not receding. Um, actually, yesterday there was a huge rally um, with a lot of uh, renewed energy after the August sort of um, slowdown. Um, so that's one level. The other level are the deeper sort of structural preconditions that um, created the sort of this, the, this situation. And then the third level is the aspect of the sort of um, uh, overall change in the uh, um, economic situation and, and in the sort of global situation post uh, COVID crisis, which I think uh, plays an important part um, in what we see in Bulgaria. It's a, it's, a, it's a small country with open economy that is very easily with, with sort of uh, little uh, capital resources and reserves of its own. And so it's it's a it's a place in which you can very easily see um, how um, uh, an individual country, its economy, its social, social sort of tissue is reacting to to the changes that I think are occurring after uh, after the crisis. Um, and then you can um, uh, also uh, uh, analyze what happens in Bulgaria in the context of this um, sort of European and particularly Eastern European processes of um, renewal of some authoritarian tendencies, uh, which I think also is, uh, is an interesting perspective. So you have all these four, um, you know, uh, perspectives on, on, on what happens in Bulgaria, and I can, you know, go, go one by one, um, and, and then we can uh, try to unpack them in more detail. Um, Can I just interrupt uh, you with, with a yeah, question? Sure, sure. Um, so just yeah. before we move on to even the historical and structural uh, issues uh, mm -hmm. as part of the pr protest demands, do, do you see a connection between the protests currently going on in Bulgaria and other protests that are going on around about the same time around the world as a response to COVID? 
there's a lot of like youthful energy in some of these protests in Germany. We even could include Belarus in the UK, in the US, all different issues. But uh, did you get the feeling that that COVID has kind of magnified uh, the, the structural defects in society affecting predominantly young people? Uh, you know, uh, uh, yes, uh, I wouldn't be able to draw a lot of the sort of the, uh, detailed uh, parallels between uh, events in different countries. For lack of, I've been immersed in what, what happens in Bulgaria, but I'm sure that what happens in Bulgaria uh, is very um, sort of directly connected to um, uh, a number of global tense, uh, trends. I, I, we see <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sort of uh, um, Bulgaria, uh, if we sh should start from that uh, perspective and it's it's the broadest and maybe uh, it's a good way to to um, to start. Uh, Bulgaria is is a country which is is losing its population on a on a dramatic scale. It's it's sort of in many um, uh, rankings. It's it's the country globally that that loses its population uh, in in sort of in, on the fastest uh, rate. And that and includes immigration, predominantly, yeah. Not well, immigration and also uh, um, sort of uh, birth rates and mortality. All the, all these combines, but immigration uh, here is the most important element. Bulgaria has been um, sort of uh, uh, ejecting people on a on a dramatic uh, uh, scale, and it's it's there is this expression that is also very common in Bulgaria to vote with your feet, basically that if you don't like the situation in Bulgaria, you prefer not to try uh, to participate in the political process and to sort of get some improvements, but rather you just hop on a plane and, and, and leave the country. And, and that's, that's how you not simply depopulate the country, but you actually self-select the more active and, and sort of energetic elements of the uh, populace to, to leave the country and to um, sort of seek uh, uh, what to do with their energy at, uh, 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 in other places. But I think uh, uh, COVID is, is, has shown something uh, together with other uh, trends, of course, uh, to, together with the sort of uh, um, dramatic geopolitical change because the sort of the change in the, in the situation in which you have the West uh, not being sort of the only uh, um, the reigning model, um, and suddenly there are uh, this this uh, as, as assembly of Eastern uh, autocracies that are, are um, emerging and uh, are posing different level and different aspects of, of um, uh, challenges, including China, um, basically giving credibility to to the existence of. Uh, alternative, uh, you know, model of economic and social and political uh, structure to a society, uh, but also relevant for Bulgaria, Turkey and, and Russia, each of which is, is exercising different level of uh, immediate pressure on, on Bulgaria and Eastern Europe and Europe uh, as a whole. So uh, you have to look in this, uh, on this different challenges to the uh, sort of predominant uh, liberal model, a democratic model that, that up to now seemed to be without any alternative. And suddenly um, um, all of them are, are uh, sort of proving that uh, you can uh, actually have other models that are viable in their own rights that can um, um, actually um, put up a challenge on our own territory um, and uh, actually can, uh, in, in, in the case of China, um, even uh, aspire to, to uh, consolidate an alternative, if you will, pull of, of uh, sort of uh, a new global organization on the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the global community. And, and so, uh, uh, and then comes uh, the virus and all sort of the, the, the reassessment of the very idea of security, which you have to do on a national level, on, on global level, but also on, on the level of a household. And suddenly, I think, at least for Bulgaria, a lot of People have understood that um, you 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 are better off if you have a functioning home country. You may opt for living in in, in London or in Brussels or wherever, but uh, in times when you have to sort of lock up, 
somewhere for, for weeks or months. It's good that this, you have the option of, of having your country functional. So and that, that, can, we, let, can we talk about this uh, sure. concept of, of, uh, yeah. of the desire and aspiration to live in a functioning country? One, one of, some of the demands, uh, from what I understand, uh, of the protest is to have the National Assembly, the Parliament, uh, resign en masse and for the drafting sure. of a new constitution. Uh, what, what, what do you see? How, how would those things uh, improve the situation or, or <laughs> assist in the development but, but of a the, country? The, the basic sort of the basic impetus is 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 uh, uh, that people suddenly understood that they can no longer regard the fact that Bulgaria is the most corrupted country and uh, a very good example of what uh, you know the world bank calls state capture um, so it's not simply corruption uh, it's systemic corruption it's organized highly organized corruption it's a corruption that is uh, sort of competing as logic of organization of the governance in the country it's not simply individual officials deciding for, for lack of good morals deciding to take bribes it is a, a, a philosophy, a con conceptual sort of framework of organizing how the processes of governance should, should uh, happen. It's a totally different uh, uh, um, sort of scale. And, and uh, up to now, a lot of people thought that, you know, um, you can always leave the country and without uh, too much of a transactional cost. And, and then uh, even if you opt to live in Bulgaria, Brussels or Washington are going to intervene and or at least are going to maintain some level of, of minimal standards that are not going to be bridged. And so it was an equi equilibrium um, so far uh, from, from a personal perspective that there are, uh, uh, Bulgaria is in a, in a bad shape, but you can always leave and then things cannot get too bad because of this existing external framework. And then I think <clears throat> um, um, uh, a combination of factors changed that equilibrium. First of all, uh, living turned out in the post-COVID um, sort of uh, post-economic uh, uh, crisis uh, situation because you know, uh, after the COVID economic crisis is coming and there is the strong, I think, understanding that this economic crisis is going to change the structure of economy because of the need to, to, to use new technology. Unlike the crisis of 2008, 2009, this one is going to sort of uh, uh, unleash uh, a, te a global technological uh, transition, uh, which is going to change everything about the way we live, work, study, um, you know, operate, communicate, whatever. And, and so this is a type of change that you sort of uh, uh, suddenly understand that you may be better off experiencing in, in, a, in a community that you, you, you know, own a stake uh, uh, greater than uh, being an immigrant in a maybe developed country and, and sort of uh, well-organized country, but uh, a country that you don't have a, a stake. And suddenly I think people are dis rediscovering, at least in Bulgarian context, a lot of people I see it, are rediscovering the idea of, of sort of um, being a stake stakeholder, uh, having a domicile, uh, even while preserving options to, to travel abroad and even to live uh, abroad and to, to reside abroad. It's good that your country, that the price of, of having a dysfunctional country in your backgrounds is, is increasing. And then, uh, uh, and then uh, people uh, also understand that uh, um, they need to be more engaged with the shape of, of Bulgaria because of this. And, and then uh, they are calling for, for a simple thing uh, that is simple conceptually and very difficult to, um, to realize and to, to sort of implement good governance. Mm -hmm. It's not simply uh, uh, for sort of uh, the opposite of corruption, which would be public integrity and sort of better morals of, of public servants. And how do you, how do you uh, think a state would achieve good governance? Well, that, that's why I'm saying it's, it's, a, it's a complex thing. Uh, um, the way people sort of intuitively, intuitively are, are, are uh, shaping this are calling for two things. First of all, changing government. Uh, the normal democratic sort of outcome of uh, when you're unhappy with your government, government you, you want another government. 
hoping that through uh, sort of the, the, the meal of uh, uh, an election, you would be able to somehow achieve uh, Im improvement of the sort of human material that, that gets into parliament and then into different um, um, state regulators and, and the administration. Uh, but this whole chain of sort of public services depends on parliament and the, the quality of parliament depends on elections. So that's why people are calling for, uh, for, the, for elections. And then the other thing is, is uh, uh, reforming the prosecution, which is the sort of the trigger of the criminal enforcement, which in itself is, is sort of the, uh, um, the other uh, that guarantees better outcomes in government by uh, increasing the, the sort of the, the risks associated with uh, irresponsible behavior. Uh, and because in Bulgaria there's very long history of seeing the prosecution as um, sort of uh, selectively inactive. So it's, it's a combination between two things and it's sometimes it, it's difficult to sort of explain it to outsiders. It is in the same time problem with cases that are not investigated and problem with cases that are investigated in a way that has nothing to do with, with uh, rule of law. And let me give you uh, 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 an example. Uh, recently, and that, that's a uh, sort of very important element of the sort of uh, factual preconditions of, of the protests, a number of recordings and pictures of Bulgarian prime minister were leaked anonymously. I don't know really who did that. Uh, but he was uh, uh, apparently by somebody who for months has been around him, uh, most likely uh, a woman. Um, he was uh, uh, recorded while talking on the phone. So we have, uh, 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 I think, three or four uh, recordings, audio recordings of his conversations where we hear only his replicas. Uh, and, and then, and then uh, a number of photographs of his bedroom. And what we hear and see is uh, abuse of power. And we see, uh, we hear him discussing how he was uh, uh, with somebody, we don't know with whom, uh, how he participated in a meeting earlier this day with the prosecutor general planning specific law, law, uh, law enforcement operations and then using those uh, uh, operations as argument in the context of campaign. So it's a clear cut using uh, the uh, sort of the law enforcement for campaigning purposes. And then we see pictures in which his drawer uh, uh, next to his bed is filled with amounts of money and gold that according to journalistic estimates vary between half a million and two million euros. And then we have his declarations his asset declarations. And there is nothing in these asset declarations to explain these amounts of savings. And this material is not investigated for months. There is an increasing public pressure that this, 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 this material should be investigated, at least for, the, for, for understanding how it is possible that the prime minister is recorded and photographed in, in his heavily guarded villa. He, 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 he uses you know, a Bulgarian analogy to, to Downing Street 10. You know, it's, it's out of question that somebody would be able to enter this, uh, um, uh, prem these premises and, and sort of make recordings and then release them. And this is not a national security problem. And then these recordings are showing abuse of power, a culture of abuse of power. Very troubling, you know, material. I, I can go on describing it. There is also a conversation with a very important Bulgarian business person. And the prime minister is calling him and saying, why are you supporting the opposition? I don't like this. And I hope you read between the, the lines that when I don't like this, this is a problem. It's definitely, uh, and this is a business person, by the way, operating the, um, the, the Russian uh, the, the, the Russian owned uh, oil refinery in Bulgaria, which is suspected to have over the years uh, uh, avoided paying taxes in the amount of uh, half a billion euro. So you can very easily see how 
if the government is turning a blind eye on, on uh, some of the profits, then the prime minister may be in the position of, of actually asking questions why this private person is supporting the opposition. And this is corruption. And this is organized corruption. And people see this, they hear this, and there is no investigation. And then in the same moment, every single publisher of media that is critical both to the government and the, the, the prosecution is under investigation. And these investigations are, to say the least, extremely questionable in terms of whether they have anything to do with fair trial uh, uh, standards, with uh, uh, meeting even the minimal standards for uh, fair trial and, 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 and protection of human rights. They're extremely politicized, extremely uh, partisan, even the way the prosecutor general is discussing this, uh, this investigation. What, what, about, what about the judiciary then? Where do, what role do they play in this? Well, that, that's the role. The, 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 the president of the Venice Commission, once commenting on the Bulgarian uh, prosecution, said something <clears throat> I think very uh, useful. He said that it's not simply not effective in fighting corruption, but it is also producing corruption. Because you see, the prosecutor, the prosecution, has two very important powers. One power is, is to initiate criminal investigation, which is a um, sort of a very repressive thing to experience if you are the object of. And especially if it is done in a very repressive way. And there is a number I can go on and go on give you, uh, giving you a number of uh, uh, sort of repressive instruments that have been created on the initi initiative, the legislative initiative of the prosecution, created a number of very repressive instruments, institutional and procedural, that are then used selectively against people that are obviously critical or somehow otherwise um, uh, desired by the government to be attacked. And then that's one of the powers of the prosecution. And, and, and you know, I can give you a lot of examples, but I think that the, the publishers is, is, is sort of good enough uh, that, you know, the, the, repression, the repressive powers of the prosecution are, are used for political purposes. And then there is the second power, which is even greater, actually, in terms of its destructiveness. It is the power not to investigate. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't investigate the prime minister, you actually have him uh, 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 by some very sensitive political parts of his body. And, and he is turning into uh, a politician that is very careful what he does or he doesn't vis-a-vis -vis the prosecution and the political lobbies that have installed the prosecutor general because this is a, a culture of using the, the prosecutorial powers in Bulgaria that exist for decades. It's not something that starts with the present prosecutor general. We have a very long history of, of increasing abuse of prosecutorial power for political and economic personal, uh, 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 purposes. So what, what changes, what legal, legislative, structural changes do you think need to happen? The, on, a, on a structural level, this, this situation in which uh, uh, the prosecution in Bulgaria is not simply selectively prosecuting corruption, but also using um, sort of its ability to not prosecute corruption, to create even more corruption, uh, more sort of ability, ability to influence uh, key figures in the media, in the business, and in the political life and uh, uh, the administration. One way to tackle it uh, um, is, is to, uh, uh, and you have to sort of have the backgrounds. The problem was, uh, with the, 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 the constitutional setup in Bulgaria is that the prosecution it was made part of the judiciary. And the way this, this was implemented in, in Bulgaria was that the status of prosecutors and judges was equalized. So prosecutors in Bulgaria uh, 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 on an individual level enjoy the same level of irremovability and, and lacking accountability as a judge, which is a perversion because it's, it's a totally different uh, uh, situation. Yes, there are 
national systems uh, worldwide and, and in Europe, in the European context, particularly uh, the so-called Roman systems, in which the prosecution is uh, uh, sort of um, attached to the judicial branch. But it is never in the same situation centralized. We have a Soviet-style prosecution that is very sort of uh, uh, centralized, top-down. Uh, the individual prosecutors are uh, completely uh, at the mercy of the prosecutor general for their career and uh, uh, work assessments and, and career pros uh, uh, prospects and, and, and sort of uh, uh, ethical regulation. And at the same time, they're uh, uh, not responsible to anybody outside of the pro of the of the uh, of the institution and the prosecutor general who sits on the top of this pyramid is completely free of any democratic accountability and and so you have an island and the, the sort of the division of, of powers in a classical sense exists to to create a, a situation in which for every power there is a counter power Mm -hmm. that can check and balance uh, uh, p possible abuse of, of, of power. It's, it's not, it doesn't exist to create separate universes, constitutional universes that, that do not intermingle. And this is the situation in, in, in Bulgaria. And it's uh, been used, this situation of uh, sort of uh, this prosecutorial island has been used to, to create it as a power base from which then the prosecution uh, um, has been organizing sort of invasions into the domains of different other political powers, uh, institutions, and, and the business. And because the people that actually this created this and discovered this, this uh, situation are essentially uh, in the political sphere, and they sort of uh, 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 use this, this, it's a paradox that it's a system, it's a, it's a it's an um, uh, institution which exists in uh, almost total isolation from the other institutions, having uh, the ability to influence them with, with sort of uh, significant weaponry. It's, it's a very sort of, but it's a one-way street. The other institutions do not have the ability to influence uh, uh, the prosecution through sort of legitimate means of democratic accountability. And then political lobbies have been uh, building its, its long-term ability to appoint prosecutors general that will be then responsive to their, uh, to their interest. And the way to, uh, uh, the way to um, address this is to actually create the missing counter, uh, counter link, to, to create some sort of mechanisms for the democratic accountability and professional accountability and even criminal uh, accountability that then will bring back the prosecutor general and the prosecution, sort of the prosecutorial uh, vertical of power as, as Putin calls it. Uh, this vertical of power needs to be brought back into the sort of the, the system where there are checks and balances. And then there is, you know, the political process is working to impose some level of political accountability. So our vision is to uh, establish a mechanism for parliamentary accountability of the parliament uh, of the prosecutor general. And do you, there do you are think other schools then to have the two. Oh, sorry. I was going to ask: Is it possible then to find uh, this just, balance between political accountability and independence of the office of the prosecutor general to prevent kind yes. of future it, abuse of the of this? At the level of possibility, of course, it is possible. Uh, it exists in many, uh, any, many countries. But it's a very fragile thing that needs to be established and re-established and, and, and maintained in a very sort of uh, careful way, um, much in the way that uh, we are seeing in, in Great Britain, for example, and, and, and other sort of developed democracies. So, uh, uh, you know, it, it's never uh, 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 it's never simply about what what exists on paper, and it's never uh, sort of uh, just the structure. It's always culture. It's always uh, human will and political will, and, and sort of um, how vigorous is the democratic process in a in a country. But of course, structural issues are important preconditions. They cannot. It's not simply let's amend the constitution and then things are going to happen by. Uh, on their own. It, it never works like this. You can have a perfect constitution and then it can be actually turned into a poison, poisonous toxic situation as we have in Bulgaria because if you read the 
the Bulgarian constitution um, as a text, you may not find any any dramatic things in it. It's it's a sort of confection uh, um, of you know it's it's part of the Eastern European uh, constitutions that were created in the 90s. Uh, under the auspices of the uh, Council of Europe. Yes, it has this peculiarity of the status of the prosecution. But, you know, as a text, it's nothing dramatic. Um, the way it evolved as a political practice and power practice is really the, uh, where the story uh, 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 can be understood. It's, you know, the unwritten part of the written constitution. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, um, so by changing the, the, the language then, the, the written language, it's only a precondition of changing the sort of the unwritten part, but it cannot uh, do it uh, in and of itself. And, and then uh, it's an interesting thing to, to, to look at the other sort of uh, 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 idea that, that exists. And it's exactly in the opposite direction. Uh, instead of sort of keeping the hierarchy and then submitting the, the top of it to the parliament, connecting it to the parliament. This is what, what is my, my idea. The other is, to bring the, the, the whole thing closer to the Roman uh, um, uh, systems to decentralize the prosecution. So to, to cut it in pieces uh, vertically and, and regionally. My problem with that is that you have uh, a, a specific human resource working in the prosecution. And, if you, and, and that is, is uh, uh, unfortunately a human resource that's been selected after many years of, of negative selection. And, and, and uh, if you just simply uh, uh, compartmentalize that, that human resource, that is the, the best way to keep it forever. Because you, you uh, having a, a, a hierarchy means that you can implement corruption and sort of different toxic policies, but also you can use the same hierarchy to un, un, undo them. And, and uh, uh, blowing the whole, thi the whole thing up into different pieces is, is means you, you just uh, kill the possibility of introducing the same standards of, of uh, reselection and, and, and selection. And yes, we probably will need to go into uh, uh, some sort of reselection. Bulgaria is, by the way, the country that has the greatest number of prosecutors per capita in the whole of the, the, the Council of Europe. Mm -hmm. It's not simply European Union, at some point, Ukraine had more prosecutors, but now Bulgaria has the top number of prosecutors. To, to sort of to give an example, Bulgaria and Austria are similar in, in, in size uh, uh, countries. And uh, Austria has uh, around 800 prosecutors, and we have um, um, uh, 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 1,500 prosecutors. And why is that? Is that because that's a lucrative career for law students or is that something people choose to do at a very young age or someone chooses for them? Uh, look, it's uh, uh, all of that. Uh, um, it's stable career. And, 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 and then uh, uh, um, um, there is the, because there is sort of no policy process of, of so, sort of nobody is able to ask the prosecutor general, why are you opening new vacancies? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's part of the <clears throat> of the lacking of any any democratic sort of accountability element, and so they uh, there are a lot of new uh, nephews and and uh, sons and daughters that need to be appointed, and and so they they freely open new vacancies and they play with the uh, competition the, the sort of the appointment process and uh, you know it, it grows as a, as a mushroom. Uh, what, what role do you see then for the European institutions in, in assisting in the, the changes that, that potentially will come as a result of the protests? Well, look, I, uh, uh, um, my career, uh, as you mentioned, has been, uh, you know, I've, I've, I was uh, um, for many years uh, an expert and activist on judicial reform. And, and my sort of... Uh, um, main occupation was to try to engage the international community, the European Commission, the Council of Europe, the various sort of um, uh, intergovernmental institutions that are uh, maintaining some standards and monitoring mechanisms to um, sort of 
um, produced an impetus for, for reform in Bulgaria. And the top of that was when I joined the, the previous Boyko Borisov government. Uh, he, he needed somebody to sort of uh, a pretty face to show to Brussels to say, yeah, yeah, we are doing a reform. And I was uh, absolutely aware of the fact that there is no meaning of doing reforms in, in the head of Mr. Borisov. He wanted to, to sort of uh, uh, hide behind somebody's back. He, it was a, a tactic of um, uh, uh, sort of uh, mimicking uh, uh, reforms. Uh, but I thought uh, that I should experiment and see if there is a minister of justice that is frank with the European institutions, both in, in sort of describing what are the problems and also uh, is able to define some uh, solutions that are based on our national experience uh, can work. If this is going to sort of uh, focus the European pressure and, and give it a, a sort of uh, uh, leverage to really produce some outcomes, and I, I must say it didn't work like this. Uh, um, um, what I saw is that the, the commission uh, and the sort of uh, power structures behind it, I mean, the, the, the national governments uh, prefer to deal with Borisov as, uh, as he is, rather than to, to pressurize to, uh, him to do reforms. And, and so for them, um, you know, the, the, the cause of judicial reform in Bulgaria was a, uh, you know, part of, of what um, you discuss with Bulgarian counterparts, but never a dramatic uh, uh, priority. And so um, when I resigned, I understood I need to go into politics, not because I ever wanted to uh, pursue this career. I um, always thought that this is the last thing I would uh, actually do. Uh, but because I understood that the only chance of us doing something about Bulgaria is to mobilize internally, we need a, 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 a domestic organized political force with uh, agenda of implementing reforms. Uh, and, and creating facts on the grounds is the only way to actually uh, um, sort of convince the, the external factors that they will uh, need to go uh, uh, to sort of go our way, and so my 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 uh, since my resignation, my sole focus has been on uh, on sort of working in uh, the sort of in the democratic way, and I think you know uh, it's it's very difficult. Uh, uh, it's it's an uphill battle against people with huge resources uh, in terms of power, in terms of money, in terms of propaganda uh, arsenal, huge, um, but that's the only way, and that's the only healthy way. But I should say that um, uh, Bulgaria is, is relevant for every European, because if the European Union is failing in a country which is not, you know, uh, influential and, and not, um, you know, big as, as Poland, um, if European Union is failing to uh, live up to its promise that there is going to be a, a community of, of, of rule of law, right? Mm -hmm. And if the commission that has to be the guardian of the legal order of the union um, is um, essentially uh, over uh, overseeing this uh, um, this role for you know the, the 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 petty political gain of of having another vote always in support of the European People's Party. Borisov is, is not an influential European politician. It, Bulgaria is not a heavyweight on the European scene. He, unlike uh, Orban or Kaczynski, the difference is that he knows very well not to create problems at European level. Okay. And to trade this for the sort of the, um, uh, uh, the comfort of being left to do whatever he pleases in, in his own backyard as long as he doesn't give speeches about creating an illiberal democracy. And he doesn't, he's not a doctrinaire. His doctrine actually uh, uh, very picturesquely uh, described in one of those recordings where he discusses how he was lying to his European counterparts from Germany and from the European People's Party. He's 
playing the simpleton. He says it's easy to be the simpleton. It is very comfortable not to speak English. You can always pretend to not understand. You can always say, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. There was a misunderstanding. Do you think that's the, do you think that's the reason why uh, the European Commission has been quite vocal in its actions against Poland and Hungary with regards to the rule of law, but has been largely quite silent on Bulgaria because of Borisov's position within the European People's Party? Combined with, with sort of the level of, of, of uh, interest of uh, international and European press, uh, you know, but you look the, the the it's a it's a it's the same practice but a different game orban and kuczynski um uh, draw support by uh, internally domestically by uh, uh, po posing as people that are in conflict with uh, europe with the global forces and they they sort of uh, use this to as a sort of uh, mechanism to legitimize themselves Borisov does exactly the opposite he says uh, I am the best friend of Merkel. Merkel is behind me. And so anything I, I do is supported by Europe and by Merkel. You cannot say that I'm not Democrat. You cannot say that I'm an autocrat. You cannot say that I uh, uh, do things that are contrary to basic rule of law standards because Merkel is behind me. And then at the European level, he knows very well how not to create problems, how always to be the most loyal uh, uh, sort of supporter of uh, the agenda uh, uh, of Merkel. And I guess there is also a level of, uh, you know, the question of how much do you expect from Bulgaria? Uh, it's uh, what did Trump say? It's shit country. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's very easy to sort of discard Bulgaria that, yeah, I mean, what, what else can you expect? But then in terms of if we put together their, their various movements, so on one hand we have the uh, European Court of Justice, which is, you know, case by case, uh, usually involving Poland or Hungary, is developing this kind of full-bodied concept of the rule of law, which becomes justiciable. We have the European Parliament, which is reviewing the upcoming EU budget, uh, which may include provisions for uh, rule of law enforcement. And then we have the protests in Bulgaria. Do you think there will be some way in which those various factors will come together and produce some positive result in Bulgaria itself? I hope so, but my main focus uh, is, is not so much on the sort of European mechanisms, which um, it, they will take time to evolve, let's put it this way. I mean, if, if I have to continue your, uh, by the way, your uh, uh, itemization, we should also mention the European Prosecution Office of course, uh, and, and, and the like. But, you know, I think uh, uh, we have a, a, a fairly narrow historical window of opportunity in Bulgaria for various reasons, and geopolitical, including and economic and sort of the economic crisis that is coming. Uh, uh, and I don't think that we have the time to wait for, uh, for this European level uh, mechanical um, sort of uh, changes to, uh, to bear fruit. I think uh, we need to concentrate on um, sort of the, the domestic political fronts and also uh, um, something, something that has been very positive is that this time there has been a lot of media attention on behalf of uh, the international European press. And this is a game, cha game changer uh, um, that can actually uh, increase pressure on the European Commission and, and frankly Markel who has been the biggest sort of uh, backer of, of Borisov, I think not very wisely. Uh, uh, she squandered an enormous European and German prestige in Bulgaria, in, in terms of the public opinion, to you know, support Borisov uh, for really small gains that she could have gotten a, a lot cheaper, I think. But, you know, it's, it's her call. Anyhow. Uh, uh, Can I just ask you about that particular point about um, uh, Merkel herself squandering uh, a good impression of her among the public? Because the impression I get, and, and I hear it uh, from time to time, is that normal citizens, people, uh, find uh, issues of um, judicial reform or constitutional crises or rule of law to be really abstract concepts, and they don't really follow them at all. Uh, is that yeah. the same in Bulgaria? 
Well, of course, uh, of course. These are these are difficult concepts. I remember how in 2012 there was a environmental protests uh, over uh, a forest, and I um, wrote a, a, a commentary that said, you know, uh, it's it's very important to protect uh, uh, trees, but judges are also trees. They are uh, fragile uh, creatures that are beautiful if they're what they they are supposed to be and it takes a lot of time to grow uh, a tree and mm -hmm. to grow a, uh, an independent judge and professional uh, uh, judge and i remember my despair utter despair that ever in bulgaria there will be people on the streets demonstrating for rule of law and judicial reform and today seven or eight years later we have tens of thousands of people all over the country demanding you know, some sort of judicial reform and, and uh, rule of law. It's a different thing. It's one thing to call for uh, 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 anti-corruption measures because anti-corruption measures are very easily turned into uh, 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 sort of uh, another spin of the spiral of, of repression. They, they historically have been used for uh, legitimization of, uh, of autocratic governments. Putin started like this. Mm -hmm. He the two things he did in 2000 was invade uh, 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 for, for the second time uh, uh, the caucus uh, and then uh, uh, start an anti-corruption campaign against oligarchs. Mm -hmm. And I think this one was the most uh, uh, the more uh, uh, effective one. And and so uh, rule of law is a different thing. It, it's it calling for for uh, uh, just court procedure even for the corrupted and also simply you know send them to jail and then god, god is going to recognize uh, 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 his own so uh, that's a different uh, political agenda and i think it's important that in bulgarian context some understanding is is taking root i think it's a, it's a uh, very important cultural change it's okay. certainly not going to be gloriously effective and it's it's going to be a part of a uh, long evolution but we're pre prepared to 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 uh, uh to work from here and i'm very optimistic that uh, we will move the country into the right direction and not because i'm not aware of how serious the government is about protecting its uh, uh power and not simply remaining in office when i'm talking about power i mean the ability to not be accountable mm -hmm. the ability to switch on and off the law as, as you please that's a totally different power than just being the prime minister it's I totally think... different pr uh, power and i am sure that it is going to be a very heavy battle yesterday there was significant political um uh, uh police violence against protesters uh and what's more important uh, the events were showing that the government is 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 using um sort of uh different um subterfuge tactics to sort of imitate provocation uh and then to crash on protesters uh and that was organized uh, including with some propaganda resources devo uh, devoted to this they they created uh, yesterday in preparing for this they created a web page purportedly in my own name uh, in which i was calling for people not to participate in the protests because there will be uh, uh, violence and uh, uh, and then there is violence and i am now in the position to um, to explain that i did not try to betray the protests and now the entire pro uh, governmental propaganda machinery is using the material from this falsified facebook page uh and is reporting on it so it's uh you know that's but that's the game and we're prepared to to, to play by it do you think this is something which is going to be ongoing for a long time or do you do you think this is something yeah i think that they will hang, uh, hang tight. They, they, at least another month, they, they, they need uh, uh, political time. And economic. You're optimistic. Uh, well, look, they need uh, uh, um, uh, another month to uh, secure uh, huge resources, including EU funds, uh, and then to implement a plan for uh, some, some kind of 
uh, re reshaping of the model. So uh, when I'm talking about one month, I'm not talking uh, that you know after one month it will be over. Uh, after one month, we will see them equipped with uh, a lot a lot of money, additional money uh, to uh, to try to use. Uh, the elections, the next elections, as as means of regrouping and, and sort of recharging uh, uh, the whole model into something new. I have some idea how it is going to, uh, what is it is going to look like. Uh, it is not going to be nice. I, I, that that I, I can say. Uh, the, the the sort of the most fundamental change is that suddenly, a uh, 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 more openly authoritarian and repressive regime in Sofia seems to be geopolitically feasible with, you know, um, the American withdrawal, frankly speaking, the UK withdrawal, the sort of uh, weakness of the European Union, the perception that there is a multipolar polar, polar, polar world and some of the poles are uh, definitely not pro-democratic. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm speaking that we have a very narrow window of opportunity to, to sort of uh, mobilize in Bulgaria uh, sort of a poor democratic uh, public forces and, and sort of uh, uh, um, try to <clears throat> establish our own um, fortifications, mm -hmm. frankly speaking. Okay. Um, and prepare for a very long war. So that's, uh, unfortunately, the, those are they're not great words to end with, and I, I'm afraid we, we don't have any, any time to continue with the conversation. Look, I, I, I want to say something, and that is that uh, the very fact that there is war, so there are two sides, that we are in the game, is a source of optimism for me. Okay. And, um, yeah. Of course it is going to be a war. It's about power. It's about the future of the country. It's about something that is happening against, uh, uh, I think, very serious changes on the global scale, uh, uh, scene. The world is not becoming a safer and a nicer and a liberal, more liberal place. It's moving in a different direction, I'm afraid. Let's and so against this uh, background, uh, there is some sort of resistance in Bulgaria. is hugely great news. And so, yeah. Let's just hope it stays a, a war of words and nothing else. And yeah, the sure. Continues. But uh, I just want to say thank you very, very much uh, for, for giving you. your thank time you. and giving us your, your insight. That was really uh, enlightening, very useful, I think. And uh, so once again, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you and uh, stay in touch. Bye. Thanks.